Welcome to the school committee meeting. Tonight is March 14th. And let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Like in that corner down there. Oh, it's way down. Oh, yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded, so please silence your devices. Do we have any public comment tonight? Okay, seeing none. Is it? It's a public meeting. It's a public meeting, yeah. Oh, it wasn't, wasn't us. It wasn't us at this time. It's a school committee meeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Clarification. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. I'd like to welcome our students. Oh. <laughs> right here. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah. Step up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are these like close enough? Yeah. You can pull, you can pull them closer, closer to you. Okay. This one seems um, arm. Like <laughs> yeah, we'll share. Yeah, All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that one doesn't look on. Um, it's been a busy last few weeks at the high school. Lots of field trips have happened just fine between those field trips, finals week, start a new trimester next week, spring yeah. sports coming up. Lots is going on. Um, so first, one of the field trips that happened that I want to talk about that I went on was the DC trip for juniors that happened last week. It started out with a kind of crazy travel situation on the um, Sunday night, <laughs> Monday morning, going to DC. Um, it ended up being like a 12 hour travel day between arriving at the airport or buses leaving the high school and landing in DC. But 14 hours actually but it was the trip ended up being really fun after that I, I it was an amazing experience we had so much free time to explore the national mall check out um the sites that interested us personally and also some sites that the staff members that were on the trip had um planned for us or had recommended us visit it, it was a really awesome experience we also had some um, guest speakers during the trip from the State Department and the Department of Defense from the federal government. So that was really cool, like seeing their roles in the federal government and their perspective on their jobs. Um, overall, it was just like a really awesome trip. So, yeah. Okay, and then um, a field trip that I feel like I might have talked about before, but I went on kind of around the same time was uh, Student Council took a trip up to the Cape to Hyannis and we participated in the Massachusetts Association of Student Council Conference, which is a mouthful, but <laughs> um, we've been going for the past couple of years, and I know I've gone for all of my high school years, and I was really happy to be able to end it this year in like a high note and everything. Um, basically what happens in the conference is you have workshops that um, are either student run or this year they brought in some professionals to run workshops. There were people from um, the Marines who came in and went over some like, uh, it was like they brought us through this whole thing where it was it was eventually about event planning, but it was about how you like um, kind of delegate to different people. And I know that um, the student council president is thinking about doing a Skype with them to kind of talk about it, talk about it to our entire student council. So that's kind of exciting for us. Um, there was also I didn't get to go to his workshop, which I was really disappointed about. But um, our school started doing Dude Be Nice Week last year and we started putting it on and the guy who created dude be nice actually came and ran a workshop for the kids and he did it without he wasn't one of the keynote speakers so he did it just volunteering to try to get more people involved and i know some of the people in my council got to go so i was really jealous about that but um, we did get to see keynote speakers as well um, they both one of them talked more about how to take your failures and not give up on them and kind of how things are different than what they seem um, and the other one kind of talked about getting together more. He was someone who was a dancer, singer, performer, and so he really talked about like 
I remember there was one really cool part that stands out where he had he sectioned up the room and we all started doing a rhythm that was different and then eventually it came all together so yeah. it's just kind of I just remember that it was really cool um, and then we got to have elections for the next year's board and we got to have a banquet where awards were given out and it was overall I'd say just a really nice really nice event and I'm really glad that our school continues to participate in it yeah that's always an awesome field trip I went um, freshman year and it was it's always awesome to see like all the student councils from the state come together in one place and I just really enjoyed it. Some other field trips that happened in the last week were DECA states competition in Boston. Um, students who qualified back in January for the state competition at regionals um, went and competed in the business competitions. Some of them qualified for nationals. Also uh, track <coughs> nationals happened uh, over the last weekend. We had 21 athletes go which is like a crazy amount like it, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, competing in like relays and and individual events, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so those are some field trips that happened. I'm gonna add, add one quick thing to that, yeah. Jack. I mean, I think for so many of the kids, I mean, 21 kids to come. 21 is, is insane. Is, is yeah. awesome. <laughs> so many of them um, were underclassmen, um, but I think the majority of them uh, were from the girls' team, uh, which is just mm -hmm. amazing as well so uh, yeah I'm good friends with one of the high jumpers who uh, is on the girls team and the girls team is ju has just been like amazing this year so yeah for sure um, and then we can kind of talk a little bit about the things going on this week because as well as how last week was very busy this week is as well um, the most obvious one being finals mm -hmm. um, always a fun time <laughs> yeah um, I know that I'm excited for the new trimester to start, and so to do so, finals have to take place, which isn't as exciting, but... <laughs> yeah. One more day. One more One day, more. yeah. Um, there was also the Unified Champion Club. Um, so, uh, I think sophomore year or junior year, um, yeah. Bella Fang kind of worked with some of the people, worked with ambassadors, student council, as well as Mr. Nugent and National Best Buddies, Honor Society, National Honor Society yeah. to kind of create the unified basketball team so that we could be um, a unified, um, unified, a special a unified sports school because I know they talked about that at Hyannis where she got the idea and kind of took it into her own hands and I know that she wanted to kind of create a club that way there could be a cohesive group of people that would be helping to continue with it because she is a senior and I think mm -hmm. additionally she just, there are a lot of people who wanted to be involved but didn't really know how to. So I know that they had their first meeting this week and we'll probably continue to have them. That's excellent. Yeah, so that club will focus on now um, the R Word campaign as well, which was a campaign that started last year um, and it'll also continue that. So those kind <laughs> of ideas continue, yeah. Um, and then addition to the final tomorrow, we're also doing Duck the Halls, um, essentially I think 30 or a few more teachers were given little St. Patrick's Day ducks and they um, anyone who wanted any of the teachers who wanted to volunteer could and so there's a list of them up on the student council Twitter and those teachers are going to hide them and then if students find them there is a number underneath that coincides with a prize that they can get from Mr. Meehan's room. I believe five of them are gift cards and other ones are just fun little North Andover treats. And That's I think great. it's going to continue on until all of them are found because there's also a prize for the teacher who hides the duck the best and therefore <laughs> is the last one. So even if someone doesn't find them tomorrow, they can continue to look next week. Yeah, and then also tomorrow, probably the high note of the week, is the Mr. North Andover competition, which happens every year. It's always like a huge hit among uh, the students at the school, people in town. I'm really excited for it. P students could buy their tickets um, all this week at lunch for, it was $10 uh, before the event and $15 at the door tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I know I am not personally in it, but I have friends who are in it. And in addition, I know that Gay Papa and Mr. Meehan are going to be emceeing this year, and I have the honor of being able to film and edit their opening sequence, and let me just say, it is pretty amazing, so. That's one of my favorite like, <laughs> parts of the whole event. That's one of my favorite events of the year, and that's one of my favorite parts of the whole yes. thing. Yeah, so, so, just trust me, even the MCs are preparing and going ham, so I don't even know what the contestants are doing, yeah. but I can imagine this year's going to be pretty amazing. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> awesome. I'm really excited. So.
Um, and then something that's kind of unrelated to what we're talking about now, but I know I didn't mention it at the last meeting because I wasn't really sure about it, or I didn't know about it, but one of my friends actually stopped me and asked if I could talk about it. Um, before last meeting, there was a delay at the school, and I don't know if we'll be having another one this year with the weather getting nicer. Yay! But um, she, she drove, and I didn't, so that's why I didn't know this, but she kind of complained that the... Um, it wasn't really salted or anything, the um, parking lots. I know that a few people that she knew fell coming into school, and I know mm. that in the parking lot, one of the uh, parents who were dropping off their kids swerved on ice and ended up hitting two of the teacher's cars. Mm. So I don't know if there's going to be another one, but she was wondering, if, like, she just wanted to, like, bring it to your attention that every now and then, like, it's like they did plow it, but it wasn't really salted until after it kind of students had gone to school. Yeah, we were aware. That's a, that was an interesting one because it stopped snowing at 5 a.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the town went right out at that time, but a lot of folks came to school before, much earlier than the two-hour delay. Um, staff, students were here, um, and they scraped and they put salt where they could, but they couldn't get all their normal spots mm -hmm. because folks came in early. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Jackson worked on it with uh, <laughs> staff, kids and people that come in early. Is so. there a way to prevent that? Could we like put orange cones out so that people couldn't come in until, you know, sometime? It's all timing. I, yeah. You know, it's this didn't stop until about 5 a.m. that day, 5.15, and we called the delay at 5 or 5. No, 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 I just mean so that people can't come into the high school parking lot until yeah. it's a reasonable time, until the town's had time to treat. Maybe something we could look at, right, Mr. Mealy? We could. Just unrelated, but something that I didn't know about because I had my mom drive me when it was icy. So, <laughs> and I'm hoping Smart. there's no more yeah. snow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Particularly no more flights going out when this. Yeah, snow. I agree with that for yeah. sure. But did you have fun in the airport at least? <laughs> yeah, it was it was a fun night. It was a long night, but in the end, you know, we all had a blast a just hanging out yeah. together. We were all exhausted by the end of it, but it, it was it was an interesting start to an awesome trip. So. It was a fun day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Something you'll never forget, I'm sure. Definitely That's right. Not, yeah. Um, yeah, so that ends kind of what we have tonight. Try three starts on Monday, so that's exciting. Last trimester for the seniors. Yeah. Oh, spring sports also start on Monday, too. Yeah. Good. All right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you both Thank very you. much. Guys. Mr. McDevitt. Um, do you know if a lot of these track kids that are going to nationals were, were ones that started in like the booster club track? I mean, it seems like maybe that would be paying off at this point because <coughs> it was getting started maybe when some of these kids were younger. You mean the youth track program? Youth yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know for sure. Um, I'm sure Mr. Newton can help us uh, figure that out. Um, but uh, I mean, I think the track program is incredibly strong. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the youth program has made kids certainly more interested in it so uh, definitely that's exciting yeah it's awesome 21 is i was talking to um somebody it's crazy it's, yeah who i said you know 21 they're like no way you've got to be wrong and i was like no no 21 <laughs> it's like, wow. that's Go awesome. that is amazing All right. are we ready for this presentation we are ready All right. uh and Yes. Um, yeah. Come sit down, both of you. And turn the mic at another one. Thank you. Welcome. We're thrilled to have uh, you here tonight. If you can introduce yourselves, as well as um, we're going to have a presentation on the history lab here at North End of High. And at the end of the meeting, uh, NACAM has agreed to follow us down to look through some of the artifacts and they'll add that on as an addendum uh, at the end. So Excellent. I'll start. Um, <coughs> Brian Sheehy, History Department Coordinator here. Um, kind of started the whole history lab. I'm Caitlin Parks. I'm a senior at the high school and for the last two trimesters I've been an aide in the history lab. She's put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Helping me out. Um, this is actually a good uh, kind of dry run. I'm going to be presenting this at the uh, History Camp in Boston on Saturday. Okay. Um, just getting the word out about what we're doing here in North Andover. Um, when you guys do come down to the History Lab, it's kind of a mess. <coughs> we had the um, 
we had the roving archivist from Massachusetts come in today and she was assessing kind of how we're taking care of things and kind of giving us some some suggestions to uh, kind of improve the way we preserve all of our items so um, start with what like what is this and how did it come about um, actually started uh, Andy Van Horn sent me a um, video of a couple of teachers um, from Westford Academy, Stephen Scully, uh, who were doing some um, kind of hands-on learning. It was, he actually sent me a video of him doing trench warfare, and Westford Academy actually lets them dig trenches and reenact World War I battles. Um, contacted him because he was doing some object-based learning, some, some kind of really interesting stuff. So um, half the department went to Westford Academy during one of our professional development, well, developments last year like last year and um, he had some typewriters out he had some uh, stereoscopes um, just a different way to re kind of reach kids through like through objects and through actual history um, like the idea um, Lawrence History Center kind of steps in when I was an undergrad at, um, at, at Merrimack I did an internship at the Lawrence History Center and um, kind of really developed my love for history there and then um, I don't think you really un like understand what history is all about until you kind of really get in there and start seeing some artifacts and that. So I've always had a passion for it um, and I kind of just brought that passion to um, the lab. Story of the lab, um, my uh, uncle died or passed away last, like, last year and we were cleaning out um, Triple Decker and Lawrence. My grandmother was on the second floor, we had to move her to the Prescott house and I had all this stuff, like all this great history stuff and I can't throw it away. My house, I've got three, like three kids, plenty of stuff. So it's like, wow, this is kind of a great opportunity to start this and, and use some of the materials. So um, you see some pictures there. You'll, when we go down to the lab, you'll actually be able to see them. They were my grandfather, and I found a lot of his World War II stuff, his diary. Um, so that kind of is, 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 is where it started. And then obviously some help. Uh, we got some great donations of some uniforms um, from some people in town. Um, Carol over at the at the at the history at the at the historical society has been awesome to us, um, just giving us all like all kinds of stuff that they have extras of. Um, Kathleen, Kathleen over at the library put a call out to like the state archive and they donated some books and she's donated some um, some different things to us. So we've we've really been blessed with some help from uh, people in town. Um, funding. Um, a lot of this was paid for. I have a um, historic baseball team, and we run a fundraiser every year. Um, and part of the fundraiser goes to breast cancer. That's why we're all wearing pink. Um, and part of it goes to ed, like education funding. So, you know, perfect kind of hourly like, opportunity to get something off. And we just uh, got a. It's technically fifteen thousand. Half of it's our, our like our matching. Um, so seven thousand five hundred dollar grant from um, the state historical uh, records advisory board. Um, so that we're going to start conducting oral histories for veterans. That's, that's our, like, that's our plan. Mm -hmm. So we're going to invite veterans in, record their stories, and then match their stories with objects. Because the whole point of the lab, and, and Caitlin will talk about it when we get to that later, when kids enter the lab, they want to touch stuff. They like love getting in there, and there's so many things to touch and see. Um, I think matching a veteran's story with, like, with objects just, just really brings that story to life even, like, even more. Here's some photos of the lab. Um, this is actually set up for a museum walk. You guys see it later. It won't be as um, organized. But um, you see kids in, like, in there um, accessing it, um, kind of going through the path of, of like World War I. See another picture there. Uh, we have all kinds of objects, from uniforms to stereoscopes, postcards, um, like, like historic books, all kinds of stuff. Not going to show it now, but at some point, if you want to watch the cam video, if you uh, YouTube it, I uh, see some pictures there of um, my grandfather's diary, his service records, a couple pictures, dog like dog tags. Um, up on the top right are some Nazi belt buckles that were donated. Kids love that stuff. Just anything that you know they can like they can see. Um, so what's the goal? History is boring. History, history is a bunch of worksheets and teachers standing up in front and lecturing. Uh, we wanted to make history fun, engaging, and enjoyable for all of our students and really bring it to life because it can be interesting. It can be fa like f really fascinating. Um, and we wanted to, to benefit our teachers and enrich what they're learning. And um, as Caitlin will tell you, 
when, when, when teachers bring their students in there, they're like, oh yeah, we learned about that, we learned about that, well, that makes sense now. So it all kind of just brings it together. Um, develop historical thinking skills. One of the big things that at, the, at the high school that, since I've become department coordinator, that we focused on are the six core historical thinking skills and developing those in our, like in our students. And a lot of times that using um, objects and, and, and using the things in the, like in the lab kind of um, reinforce and, and, and kind of bring those things to, uh, to kind of fruition for our students. Um, another thing that, that Caitlin's gonna get into is when we have aides, a lot of times people think, oh, if I, wanna be, I really like history, I don't wanna be a history major because all I can do is teach and I don't think I can be a teacher. This, this lab, <laughs> 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 this lab shows that there's a lot of different things you can do and a lot of the things that, that Caitlin has done and Gabe Papa um, is doing in like in the lab are a lot of the options that our students could have outside of just teaching with like with history. Um, so here are some of the things that the aides have done so far this like this year: cataloging, which I was told today by the um, archivist that I have a lot to I have a lot to go on that. <laughs> cataloging is not my thing. Um, one of the things I'm pretty excited about is digitizing. So we've made. Uh, we basically, every piece of material that we had for World War I when we had it out, we took pictures, like, like pictures of it, we digitized it. So our teachers, if they, don't, if they have a big class of 30 or, or whatever, and they can't bring a class in, they can still utilize the material digitally um, and, and kind of manipulate it in different ways. Um, I'll let Caitlin tell a story about when I asked her to digitize things and she got very mad at me. Oh, um, so. It was probably like my first day or two. I thought I was going to be organizing, setting up displays, which I did. But I also found out that I was going to be spending a lot of time taking pictures, cropping them, and then putting them into a document. Um, the first time I did it, I apparently did a bad job. Um, but then I redid it, and then I did better. <laughs> very, very um, good. And now um, teachers are using them, which is kind of cool, like to you know be walking to the bathroom, and then you look in, and there's work that you did on a teacher's PowerPoint. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, and then another thing that I've been doing this trimester is um, transcribing. So I'm sure you all know that Mr. Sheehy got picked for a special teacher's program um, and he's going to France in the summer. Um, and he's focusing on a war veteran from Lawrence named um, Philip O'Connell. So I've gotten to um, transcribe his diary. Um, so it's written in kind of a messy cursive <laughs> writing that I still can't read sometimes. Um, so what I've been doing is um, typing it onto a Google Doc that's shared with anyone who wants to see it. Um, so it's just like an easier way so that everyone will have access to his diary, which is kind of cool. I feel like I like know him almost. Like mm -hmm. I get sad when he's yeah. sad if he gets yelled at or something that day, or like happy if he like gets to go to the movies that day. So yeah, it's been really cool. It's and, and that and that diary comes from the Lawrence History Center. And they were all excited that I digitized it. I spent, did like scanning every single page. And they're even more excited that um, we're transcribing it. And, and that is a, is, a, is a big boon for anybody who might access that um, diary later. Um, Caitlin already kind of talked about managing and creating exhibits. We do the museum walks. Um, a lot of our curriculum matches up so that, you know, the end of last trimester, or the beginning of this trimester, um, we had 200 plus kids come in in like a two day span because they were all studying World War I. So they all came in and um, you know, it really is like you're, you're, you're putting together an exhibit for a museum. Um, a lot of the research, and now if Gabe was here, he could talk about this. One of the first, like the first days um, I had Gabe in the lab, I was like, hey, I have these World War I photos of these soldiers. I bought them at an antique store up in Maine. They have names on the back. Um, I have a, a I, I actually, we got a grant for um, the school for Ancestry.com, like, so anybody in the school can now access an, like, Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. um, so um, <clears throat> he started re like, researching these people and he found out all kinds of information. They're from Nebraska. He found where they served and, and all of this information. And you could see the excitement as he went through recently researching and finding out more about these people and, and their experiences in the war. And, you know, um, it was really kind of cool to see. Um, 
a young person get you know, gets so excited about finding the grave of this guy in Nebraska. Uh, he actually, I was in a meeting when he found some stuff and he wanted to run in and tell me. <laughs> I kind of wish he had. Um, here's another, another example. He started researching some of these people uh, too. Um, so teachers have utilized the lab in, in a variety of different ways. One of the ways is just taking them there, uh, doing museum walks, um, things like that. Um, and that's been pretty successful. Uh, another option, um, one of our teachers on 9-11, we have a bunch of framed um, news, like newspapers from 9-11 and some, and some um, Time magazines and different things like that. She actually took the whole box, brought it down to her room, and did a whole activity on that. Um, some people have done some stuff on the Bread and Roses strike. We have a bunch of posters. They've, like, they've taken those down. Um, last year, one of our teachers did this really cool thing, was, was looking at the 50s and 60s, and how appliances and things like that changed um, Americans' lives. Mm -hmm. So we took the, those like TVs, the radio, that wonderful <laughs> vacuum, <laughs> um, down to his room and, and, and kind of had a discussion with his students um, about that, which I thought was pretty cool. That one probably still works. Yeah, <laughs> it probably does. Now this is what Caitlin was talking about with um, the uh, scanning. These are all um, <coughs> little baseball cards that were, that were made in, the, in like the 1930s that were trying to discourage people from engaging in war. And it goes over um, the Japanese invasion of China, the Spanish Civil War, and um, Italy's invasion of Ethiopia. And he, uh, one of the teachers this, like, this year took, like, took a couple of these and put a whole document-based question together. Um, so again, just all the different ways that you can utilize the, like, the material in the lab. Uh, here are some of the numbers. And when I show these numbers to some of the museums and, and people who are involved in museum study, they're like, wow, that's a lot of people that come, like, come through and utilize your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see like 150, like 15 students came, uh, came through in January. And it's not just history classes. We have English classes coming in. We had a French class come in. Um, the uh, choir came in because we have some song books from, from mm -hmm. World War I, and they were doing some songs about, like, about World War I. Um, I think that in the future it can grow even, like, even more because um, I think object-based learning is, is definitely a, gr a great approach. Uh, 245 people utilized the material um, in the lab in their classroom the first tri like, trimester. And again, once people know more about it, once we improve the ability to um, kind of access, because if people want to take stuff out, they have to ask me, well, what's in there? Um, once we get a database and start kind of doing the things that the archivist talked to me today, I think it'll, it'll allow more people to get in there and utilize it. Um, that's tough to read. <laughs> uh, we did ask some of, the, like, some of the students to give their perspectives on uh, what they thought about the lab after going in it. And I'll let Caitlin uh, hit that, because when kids are around, they yeah, I think they, t they talk um, more around me than they will around the teachers who are in the room because, you know, I'm just a kid. Um, so some of the things that um, struck me here were the kids who um, didn't like history, who saw something clicked in the lab, um, and now they not, not even liked it, but just had a greater appreciation for it, and they were, like, willing to give it another chance type of thing. Um, there was one girl who said that her and her partner um, liked science, but they didn't really like history and they found some uh, magazines um, from I think the 1940s or 50s that um, were about science and, and technology and they were so <coughs> interested and then for the first time they like found something in history that they could appreciate so it's stories like that of kids who like don't have the same passion for it that I do that now get to experience a little bit more of it that like is what makes this so great one of the cool things about um this, this hits all different types of levels. Um, one of the scrapbooks that somebody gave you was filled with ships. And Kristen Newman has a student who is obsessed with the Titanic, obsessed with ships. We gave him that, um, that scrapbook to go through, and now he's going through, and he's looking at every single one of those ships and kind of compiling a history for us on those That's ships. Um, Three, four hundred pages worth. It's a, yeah. I mean, it it's was this lot. thick it's when it was donated by He was uh, ready to take both Ted books. Trip. <laughs> there are two books. He was ready to take them both at the start. So it, it's, it's been great, um, regardless of level, regardless of um, ability. Students are able to identify and, and really kind of get deeper into history and uh, develop that appreciation for it. Um, here's some simple uh, 
ways that people have used the lab, uh, analyzing, interpreting sources. So when you go through kind of breaking down what the sources are, what they mean, how they fit into the, co uh, like the context of the time period. Um, I did a um, activity with my AP Euro kids looking at change over, like, over time. So we were studying uh, the French Rev and I brought them up like upstairs for a World War I activity and we, I kind of just asked them what's changed? How, how have things stayed, like, stayed the same? Um, just to kind of see them, uh, how, so that they can see how history changes and how history a, a lot of times stays the same. Um, cause and effect, I mean, all of these different things are, are things that we look at in the classroom. Uh, the future, we're going to work on the, on the grant, continue to di uh, digitize and properly <laughs> catalog the material. Uh, we hope to expand the collection to fit more of the things in our curriculum um, and create more lessons and activities so that a lot of people can, can utilize them. I, I would say thank you, and I'm sure you folks have questions, but um, I wouldn't sell history short. I actually think it's the, one of the best subjects possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> and more importantly, the skills of developing an understanding of perspective in a specific time period and wa trying to walk in those shoes and think what it was like. But more importantly, we have a rich history here in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, North Andover, for example, was a town of 5,000 in 1941 when December 7th hit. And, um, you know, during that time, we had 939 soldiers go off to fight, and 33 were killed in action uh, or missing. Uh, and that's quite a sacrifice for a town that side. Lawrence Haverhill had uh, in the hundreds, I'm sure. Um, and so the ability to bring that back to life is just amazing because we're losing veterans at a rate that's staggering. Um, when I think of Vietnam veterans, I think they're really young. Uh, mm -hmm. And when we honored a Vietnam veteran recently at Thompson, I think it was 71 or 72, and I think back to a celebration I was part of in 2008, and we had a lot of World War II guys mm -hmm. and, right. and women. And guess what? <coughs> Two years later, there were no more World War II guys. It was then the Korean folks. And mm -hmm. so the rate at which we're, which we're losing them and the ability for you to connect not only the diaries that you have, but some type of oral history, and if it's not from them themselves, maybe family, mm -hmm. uh, I think could be critical and spark mm -hmm. an interest in history, <coughs> reading, uh, et cetera. So thank you. I mean, I, I think it's fascinating. I mean, I'm a history major as well, so um, you know, no one can really call it boring. So, uh, <laughs> um, but I love the fact that you know, the kids can kind of touch them, right? Yeah. And, and you know, really kind of access them. I mean, I think if you were to take these kids um, to any museum in the world, right? Like everything's behind glass, right? They've like it that. looks nice, <laughs> but you know, when so when you can really kind of be part of it, um, I think that's when you really start to appreciate and, and you, there's a tangible kind mm -hmm. of aspect to that. Um, and I really like the, the story that you were talking a, a little bit about with Gabe kind of researching mm -hmm. who those students were, uh, who those soldiers were, I'm sorry, um, and kind of learning, you know, their personal stories and, you know, maybe where they're from or, you know, where they're buried. And, you know, they, they left home at 18 or 17 and, you know, what happened to them in their lives. Um, and I think that that's, you know, pretty amazing. And then, you know, just to uh, piggyback onto Dr. Gilligan's uh, comments, you know, we are losing them, of course, at a, at a pretty high rate. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, I think it was one or two days ago, there was a veteran in Haverhill, I don't know if you saw this, who um, passed away. <coughs> it was 96, 97, and literally right. nobody yeah. uh, from his family was still alive. His children wow. had gone, um, or he hadn't had children. I don't remember his mm -hmm. particular thing. There were a couple that they were talking about, and he had no family, and the whole then people from the town mm -hmm. came out. And so, um, you know, I don't know if there's an, opportunity for something like that but I mean I think that that really kind of helps to, to really make it um, real it's not just something on a piece of paper mm -hmm. so thank you this is awesome thank you um, I just had one question I'm thrilled with this I think it's outstanding I'm very impressed with the work that you guys are doing um, on your future slide I had a question you've been doing all this digitizing and transcribing etc down the road do you foresee ever sharing out these materials even in just a digital way with other schools or yes i mean i'm presenting at the digital commonwealth um, conference in april about how to utilize um, digital material and how to use it in in, in an educational setting um, 
and love to also connect with other or organizations to house some of this because mm -hmm. part of it's the housing part of it's right. having those databases that are searchable mm -hmm. um nothing in our like in our lab is super secret um i <laughs> is there i don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um and, and and i think the experience i've seen kids walking through this like this lab i think other schools should be doing this um I think that this is hopefully the future of, of history teaching and teaching in general. Because mm -hmm. I think that, that right. objects, um, kids can get excited about objects in, in all subjects. Um, this is like the Smithsonian actually has something um, and they offer professional development and they might be coming here next day next year. I've talked to Lorene about it um, a little bit. Um, but there is an, uh, it's called object learning and they have a, a learning lab and they come in and they uh, give a professional development for teachers on how to utilize object-based learning uh, and they want to get to Massachusetts so um, one of our professional development days would probably be perfect for something to get everyone in the district kind of knowledgeable of object-based learning and how to utilize it in the cool. classroom. So I'm wondering what you use for tools for digitizing I mean you're not just using like your camera phone it's my iPhone. <laughs> you are you are using your iPhone. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We started with the document camera, but it wasn't the best quality, so we found that the phone was a little bit easier. We're talking about getting like an iPad or something. I have a uh, turbo stand on my on my phone, and that is black and white. You can play with with, uh, mm -hmm. with the images. Um, if we could get a couple of those, it would probably be easier. We did the like she said, we did the object camera, and it doesn't line up right. And the That's when I did the bag job. Yeah. Was the <laughs> but then I fixed it with the phone. <laughs> That's interesting. There's an app for that. Oh, um, yes, tools. there is. I love that you um, that you have those like home objects, mm -hmm. you know, the vacuum cleaner and stuff. I had a friend in high school who said, "I would be so happy to learn pretty much anything if you can do it through the history of shoes." <laughs> um, and she was right. I mean, you talk about the technology of how to make shoes. You talk about the materials um, that you could use and all the science that goes around that. You can talk about, you know, um, the, the historical mm -hmm. experience of, for example, women in shoes or, you know, how expensive shoes were and how people couldn't get in places if they didn't have shoes and mm -hmm. how that separated. You know, so, so it sounds like, you know, her, her idea from 1980-something um, <laughs> to today, what you're doing is really, um, I think that's really exciting. One of the most excited things, or one of the most exciting experiences one of the kids had, there's a, th I think it's a thread spinner or something. Paul, like Paul K tried to dump it out of the uh, technology room. It was, it was just sitting in there. And he's like, do you want it? I'm like, oh, it looks, it looks cool. I had no idea what, I, like, what it was. And a kid was so fascinated by this one thing, he started researching it. Mm -hmm. he, found, um, he found, like, the pattern of it and found where it came from and all this, and he did all this stuff. And... That was just based on his, wow, that's really cool. I want to find out more. Um, so. Yeah, so that's really thrilling. Thank you so much for, for doing that. You said the six core historical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. Were those in your presentation? Um, most of them are. Okay. Like the different things like analyze and... Yeah, like point of view, contextualization, uh, change over time. Um, it's not a quiz. I was just <laughs> <laughs> so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really exciting. Um, I'm wondering what you're going to do when you have more stuff than you can house. I was because that's that. going to happen super quick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's starting. Happening. We're we're going to start building some more shelving units and things like that. Um, I suggested to... a loft. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, interesting. Um, just to follow up on Ms. Mabley's question, I had a similar question. Is there a way the public could see these things online? As of right now, everything we've put into uh, the Google Drive folder, um, I'm not sure how public that, like that can be. If we can get a database and get onto, um, I'd like to, in my, in my mind's eye, connect with UMass Boston and get some of the stuff on UMass Boston's website huh. or even Digital Commonwealth's website. Mm. But there's some restrictions on, you know, we're taking pictures with our iPhones. They have to be certain quality for mm. it to get on. Mm. So. We're still learning, and I and I hope when I go to some of these conferences, and I and I mean even Saturday we're going to his I'm going to history camp, and um, there's 400 plus historians going, and I don't know, but just letting them know about this kind of stuff hopefully will spark some more interest and, and maybe help us get some partners and, and kind of grow this thing even more. That's awesome. I do know someone that may be able to help. There's been a former school committee member for a long time, 
that has been a big proponent of uh, digitization and scanning. Uh, I don't know if he's in the audience tonight, <laughs> but he's been talking about this with me for years. Uh, he's on the board, maybe the president of the Historical Society now. He's on the board of trustees at the library. I think he's a head eagle scout, amongst other things. Uh, but his name's Stan Limpert, uh, and he may be some free labor. Uh, if necessary, because I think he's been doing some of this work at the Historical Society mm -hmm. as well. And Thank I you think so he has much. time in his hands. So. Well, you're both treasures. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank we you. really appreciate it. It's fun to see. So we'll you're going to gonna take a step out and get a break. Okay. Uh, we'll go through you this. Can and stay, at the stay end, if you want. Or you can <laughs> stay, right? They're going to take us at the end yeah. to film a piece. Right. So. Great. Do you want to be the Sure. Second floor left. Good. All right, <laughs> on our consent agenda. All right, oops. So I will move that we approve the minutes of the February 28th, 2019 meeting as presented in the packet. <coughs> Second. Motion made by Mr. McDevitt, seconded by Ms. Picard. Mr. McDevitt. Oh, any discussion? <laughs> Yep. Yes. Ms. Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, I. And yes, 4 0. All right. Our superintendent's report. <clears throat> I'm uh, thrilled to announce tonight. I know we sent out a, a release on it, um, but we hired a principal for the Bradstreet uh, Early Childhood Center, the Ann Dudley Bradstreet Early Childhood Center. And um, we're thrilled to announce that Dr. Tiffany Goddard has agreed to take the job. Um, she has currently been a long time principal in Lawrence, most recently at the Arlington Lower Day School as the principal. Prior to that, she was the head of school in Lawrence of a K and one. Um, she has a doctorate from Boston University, a master's from Salem State, um, as well as an undergraduate degree from St. Michael's. Um, we're thrilled to have her. Uh, the staff is thrilled. It was a really tremendous pool of candidates. Uh, we had four finalists that went public. One was a longtime principal in Melrose, one a longtime principal in Arlington, one um, assistant principal that was very successful and still is in Wyndham, um, and Dr. Goddard. Um, so we're thrilled she's come aboard. Uh, she had an opportunity to meet parents. She had an opportunity to meet our leadership team. She had an opportunity to do instructional rounds with myself and Lorene Marks, as well as some challenging performance assessments uh, over at Central Office. And um, her references were impeccable. I spoke to the commissioner, Jeff Riley, about her at length, uh, who was her former boss until this year. So we're thrilled that she's on board. And she actually emailed today to say, can I send an email to the Bradstreet staff, tell them how excited I am? And I said, of course. Um, so we're really excited about her. Uh, secondly, as you know, um, we're in the process of hiring a director of special education. Um, typically, that's a very challenging position to fill here in the Commonwealth um, at all levels uh, across the state. But we have a, a strong pool, and we'll be bringing folks in to the screening committee next Tuesday and Wednesday to conduct uh, nine folks were chosen to come in. Um, so we'll start there. We're pretty excited about that. Sure. I also wanted to mention uh, that Lorreen Marks is not here tonight. Um, as she, as she had a family member that was having some uh, big surgery up in upstate New York, so she had to drive home. And Dr. Strait is not here tonight. She had a death in the family and had to fly out of state today. Oh. Um, otherwise, she'd be here. Um, and um, last but not least, um, <clears throat> You know, lessons learned um, from working with the Bradstreet Project, opening of school with Mr. Mealy and several others. Um, they'll be starting the Fields Project shortly uh, after school gets out uh, behind the middle school. And I know Ms. Mabley's on the committee. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're still functioning or we finished our role or not, but yes, I'm happy to still be part of it if we still get to have meetings. <laughs> but I was really thrilled. Um, Jim Mealy and I, um, were able to ask about the impact on schools. And Jim assembled a team in central office of the chief of police, the fire chief, building inspectors, uh, facilities folks. Uh, who else was there, James? Um, GN, right, from community development. 
community development yeah. and uh, Waterfield. And right. what's their official role? They are the, the design. design firm. The design firm. Mm -hmm. um, because we're, we're concerned about the impact of drop off and pick up because in the complex 2100 students are dropped off and pick up every single day um, so they you know they're working on uh, an access road um, that would not be used all that often during drop off and pick up and if it is would have notification um, flagmen with reflective vests uh, Chief Gray's worked really closely with us on the, around these safety pieces they're going to start after school and they're going to do everything they can to minimize any type of dust uh, in, impacting our parking lots, um, the Atkinson playground, etc. And I really <coughs> appreciate some proactive folks on the town side with Waterfield, with the committee, um, to take steps to make this work for everyone. So I'm, I'm truly thankful for that. Do you have anything to add to that, Jim? So yeah, the lesson learned, um, they're going to have their own road in. It's going to be similar to the, the road that they put in for um, exiting the early childhood center, mm -hmm. but it's going to be further down towards Maine, and it will be only for the construction vehicles. And the only interaction they'll have is a, is crossing over the lane of drop off and pick up, and so a few feet of that, um, which they'll manage with the uh, flagmen that Gilly was talking about. Uh, there will be no inter, you know, there will be no traveling along the mm -hmm. same routes that our cars take. Um, and then the other thing being that they're going to ensure that there's always a walking path through the site for those coming um, either to the middle school or Atkinson. Okay. Yeah, and we were thrilled to see that. Eventually there'll be a path right down the middle <coughs> to the Brad Street and to the Atkinson. Um, but in order to only do one fence to secure <laughs> the uh, area, they were looking at two to have that path. And now the path will run along the perimeter of the fence. Uh, and I believe it's Beach Walnut, one mm -hmm. of those right. um, yeah. off Parker. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's going to be paved, and that way it can be maintained by the town because we have several Brad Street parents that walk their kids that way every morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's Atkinson a boatload kids of too. kids from Atkinson, which uh, Atkinson has a ton of walkers. Mm -hmm. So we're really pleased to get ahead of this much earlier around some of this stuff so that we can uh, be in good shape. Can I ask a quick question? So re relative to that, do you know if um, Mr. Gorman or anybody has confirmed that summer fun, I'm assuming, will be again at Sargent? Or maybe we can... Yeah, well... We moved it, it last be, year because... Um, of I have to make that call to the principal. Okay. Um, but she might find out before I make the call. Sorry, now. sorry. Just <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's going to happen again okay. for this year. Okay. And possibly the next year as well. Okay. If you could do that, that would be great because the executive director of the youth center... Uh, was telling me the other day where it was going to be held again this summer. So. <laughs> and we're well, we're thrilled to have it. Yeah, it's, it uh, worked out well. Yeah, and it's great for our kids. Yeah, my daughter actually worked for that program <coughs> at that site last year, and uh, they did a good job. That that was good. Anything else in your superintendent's report? That's it. Thank you for the time. Right. Okay. I yield it to the chair for her <laughs> report. Mine will be fast. Um, first thing we need to do is decide on April dates. We have two members who possibly might not be here the same day, which we believe is only with three. Mm. So um, why don't the four of us try to figure out what we can do in April? Would you like Miss Zagari to send out a doodle poll or a Google well, form? Part of the challenge is the vacation too, right? So right. Which is the week of the 15th? Yes. Week of the 15th. And what are we skirt? And Helen, you can't do the week before that, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'll be gone the 11th. I'm gone the 11th. Okay, so we You're should not meet the 11th. Okay, and mm -hmm. that's what we're currently have. Yep. Right. Okay. So we'd be off the 11th and the 18th, so the 4th and the 25th? So we already have a meeting on the 25th. Okay. Correct. Yep. So we could do the 4th. By me. Is that okay with sure. you, Helen? Are you still are you out that I, week too? I, I do feel like um, oh, no, David I'm, had a conflict. Somebody had the fourth. Oh, it was no, it was Helen. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can know. So we do have a meeting um, the twenty eighth, so right. it'll be back to back. Yeah, we've yeah. done that before. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if everybody else can be here at the fourth, then Yep. Well I, I feel like David had something the fourth. So why don't we try to confirm with him? I feel like you okay. and David had something before. I thought they had two different ones. Miss Sagari, I know you're watching the streaming <laughs> at home. 
if we could just send out uh, an email or a poll on those dates and see who's okay. available and who's not. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, there's a possibility we could, uh, if, if the chair was amenable, maybe have one of the nights in just a little bit longer of a meeting. Sure. Well, we could go with three again. We've done that too. Yep. 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 Okay. That's right. We did. Ladies' night, right? That's yeah, right. We did. <laughs> Um, and then I also wanted to say that uh, the Young Women's Career Day was, a, I, I was hoping I could do this while Caitlin was still here. Um, I thought it was very successful and actually I would ask Ms. Mabley, whose daughter attended, if she had any feedback from yeah, that. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, she, she really thought it was quite excellent, wasn't sure what to expect, um, really liked it, thought it was um, <coughs> valuable and she was amazed to know that um, Ms. Vitsky Lynch also used to be a college softball coach, which she did not know that about <laughs> you. But no, um, she thought that it was great and um, hopes that it continues. Excellent. Well, I want to commend Caitlin, especially for her hard work, and um, Senator DeZoglio for putting that on for it's North Andover. Very good I didn't idea. realize that was the first time we had done it. She'd done it in the other schools in her district, but never North yeah. Andover. Yeah. I know that the girls so. who participated really liked it, and um, I'm sure they hope for higher participation next year. Mm -hmm. It was a great idea. Okay, moving on to old business. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Can you give us an update on the town manager search? I think... Um, we don't have one yet because the first meeting is Monday. Fair enough. But <laughs> <laughs> That's the update. First meeting is Monday. <laughs> I was going to say it at the end, but thank okay. you. Um, Sorry about that. But I, no, I should tell you there are going to be two public opportunities to go in and voice concerns or um, what you're looking for in a town manager. Um, the first of which is next week. Um, Thursday, March 21st at 7 o'clock in the Board of Selectmen room at Town Hall. And then the second one will be a daytime meeting on Monday, March 25th at 1 o'clock. And I don't know if it's at the same place or not. I believe oh, it is, but I'm not sure. Will there be any, like, surveys or collection of information online or anything like that? Or just these in-person opportunities? I don't know, but I will suggest that on Monday's meeting. Thanks. Sure. I don't see why we couldn't. All right, moving <coughs> on to old business. Um, would it be okay with the rest of the committee if we took a little bit of out order and put B before A since we have Mr. Lichardello here? Yes, sure. All right. So we have our second reading of the Memorandum of Understanding with the Merrimack Striders. Um, Mr. Lichardello, would you like to say any, wor any words at the mic? Oh. Okay, here, or w w where do you yep, want me to go? that's fine. Okay. Um, Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I, if I could, I'd like to give you a little bit of background about the Merrimack Valley Striders Running Club. Uh, it's our 40th year this year, so we've been around for a little bit. Um, and I think the one most important thing that we did is when we first started, uh, we had a mission statement. And go figure, a running club with a mission statement. And it was to encourage and enhance running at all levels. And that's really been the guiding principle of our club. And uh, so we have runners of all stripes and all ages and all capabilities from uh, youngsters to people as old as me. Um, <laughs> so uh, we have quite a variety. So one of the big things that uh, has been very important to us is uh, uh, we have managed to be relatively financially successful. And that's primarily because of the one major event we do each year, which is the Feast of Five Road Race. So as w our finances continue to improve, one of the goals that we've had is to do as much give back to com uh, communities as we possibly could. Um, we've done a number of things in the past. Um, one of the things we did a, a, a long time ago is we actually founded and managed the Fourth of July road race here in North Andover for 29 years. Um, and and it's a delight to see that it's still continuing to, to, uh, to go on. Um, a number of years ago, and Andrew, I think you were uh, on the school committee when uh, we suggested that the track at the middle school was a bit of a mess, mm -hmm. and together with the Boosters Club, uh, we each made a fairly substantial contribution to have that track uh, resurfaced. So we kind of brought it back to life, and the only thing that we asked is that we would be allowed to have our adult coach program there. and. Um, we have a staff of really terrific adult coaches, and um, uh, we've been very fortunate that our coaches uh, 
deal with runners, again, from walk to run all the way up to lots of folks who are qualifying for the Boston Marathon and, and beyond. Uh, one of our coaches is a, tri a triathlon coach. Uh, I'll tell you how good she is. She got me to be able to do an Ironman, and I'm one of those guys that sinks in the water, so th that's <laughs> how good she is. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also, each year, uh, the Striders do a scholarship for uh, area high school seniors. And uh, one of the mandates of our scholarship committee is that at least one member is from the town of North Andover. And those are $2,000 scholarships. Uh, we will be doing those again this year, and they'll be awarded in May. Um, the, um, uh, so it's, it's really been very important for us to continue to do these things. So we began looking as um, our finances, we got to the point where we said, we're doing okay. Uh, we need to do something more. And so we began to look at w what would be a bigger thing to do that wasn't just about the running club, but more something for the community. And um, ironically, one of the <laughs> things that we wanted to do, uh, our first thought was, how about if we take on the role of keeping that track at the middle school going. We'll get it repaved, we'll, we'll get the thing going in it. And um, Surprise. Uh, to Gilligan, as, uh, <laughs> we were disappointed, but as you said at the last meeting, the good news is that your 400 meter time is now a lot faster uh, <laughs> since the track is a third missing. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, we met with town manager and, and he said, well, why don't you do something with the high school track? And we said, we'd be delighted to do that. Um, so what, uh, we want to be able to do is to um, uh, make a commitment with an asterisk next to it for the next five years of doing ten thousand dollars a year for the next five years and having that money uh, dedicated to uh, any improvement any anything that needs to be done on the track we know that it's a premier track it's um, a, a absolutely an outstanding facility but the maintenance of it is hugely expensive. So if we can defer some of that cost, we'd be delighted to see that happen. Um, so uh, there are a couple of other reasons why we're also very excited about helping out with the track. Um, Coach Nugent has, uh, in addition to the high school kids working out there, and, and you know, we like to think that that's a farm league for us. <laughs> get kids <laughs> interested in running. We, we don't want all of our runners in our club to look like me. So we really are very interested in having younger runners join us. Um, uh, but Coach Nugent has a wonderful kids program that runs uh, at the tail end of the school year. And uh, three to 400 kids are in that, it's that program. Remarkable. We've desperately been attempting to put together a, a kids program for the summer that would tail into mm -hmm. that. This year we have done it. Uh, we are partnering with um, uh, a coach that is absolutely amazing. It's an existing program that we're um, uh, taking on under our wing, and um, we know that that will be a, a wonderful transition for kids. So we think that's gonna be really terrific. Um, so um, the, uh, the other thing that, that was uh, important for us was um, when we found out that the middle school track was going away, it left a little bit of a void for us, and we thought, well, gee, you know, we, we primarily want to do something good for the town. But we thought, you know, if we could get on the track <laughs> one day a week in the morning, uh, in the uh, evening, when it doesn't interfere with any other uh, programs for the schools, we'd be delighted to be able to do that. It's just such a fantastic track. Um, it's unlikely, though, uh, we asked for, uh, you know, each of the seasons. Um, it's unlikely that we'll do it in the, s in the fall um, because there are no lights. And uh, we mm -hmm. tried doing it this fall and very quickly, uh, we, really, we actually bought like a gazillion um, uh, lights, a digital, not digital, uh, uh, LED. LED, LED lights. LEDs. And uh, the two things that uh, were a problem is that first of all, uh, they weren't bright enough. And secondly, the coach uh, was get, doing a brownout when she was charging all the things. So. Uh, so that's not working. So we'll probably have to find something other than, than the not the end of a track for the fall. Um, but uh, it solves a little bit of a problem for us. But really, it, what I want you to know is that our intention is to do something for the town. And this little side perk is if we can you know, get on the track uh, with your permission, we'd be delighted with that. We have one other thing that we, we asked for, and uh, 
you know, over the years we've done a lot of, I think, really good things to give back to the community, uh, and mostly it goes unnoticed. So we asked the, uh, for the opportunity to have a small sign on the track that says something along the lines of Merrimack Valley Stride is a proud supporter of North Andover uh, track facility or something along that line. So at least people know that we're doing something nice. Um, as far as the, the coaching program, um, uh, I know there's a little bit of discussion of how many people are going to be there and, and what are the implications. Uh, our coaching program is pretty popular for the, the mm -hmm. adults. So typically the, the track would have 20 to 30 people. It's very controlled, and the good thing about uh, that eight-lane track is if there are people that are jogging on it or walking on it, um, th the only thing that we would ask is if somebody is not doing intervals or whatever, if they do want stay to the outside lanes, that'd be great. So we've dealt with that at other facilities, and there's never a problem with that. Um, so we will be as uh, unobtrusive as, as we possibly can. It's basically just running. Right. So um, uh, um, again, what we're prepared to, uh, and, I, and I keep using the little asterisk, commit to is the first five years of $10,000 a year. Um, something extraordinary would have to happen for us to not be able to fulfill the, the first five years. So we really believe that this, the part that we're very comfortable with is a $50,000 grant to the town. Uh, our aspiration is that we'll be able to continue to do that. Uh, we have reserves that we think we could, we could do all 10 years. Um, but uh, uh, because we're not a corporation and we, <laughs> we can't go to bank for loans or anything, we really have to be a little bit careful. So that's why we had a uh, provision within the memorandum of agreement that suggested that if for some reason our primary source of revenue um, uh, fell apart. And ironically, this past year, we thought that was going to happen when it was 10 degrees yes. and when chills of 15 <laughs> below. Right. And, uh, a lot of people didn't show up, but so. I um, won. <laughs> <laughs> I did register, I just did not run. <laughs> oh, only the brave, and uh, I, will t I, I promise you, if, uh, if you go to um, Feast of Five this year, uh, it'll probably be 65 degrees and sunny. And, and I, I do the announcing, and one of the things that I, I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for all of you out in this crowd, these 10,000 of you that are there, how many of you were the brave ones that yeah, ran right. this past year? And I guarantee 9,000 hands will go. <laughs> 2,000 ran. So, right. <laughs> so, um, so that, that's the program that we're suggesting. We are really excited about it. And um, um, we're hoping that our offer of partnership is, is something that, that you'll um, think is a good idea. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I don't remember seeing in here about a sign. Yeah, that's that, sign. that feels like new information to me. Was, was Jim, was that not in there? It might not be in there. We yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know we have, you know, rules and regulations about how big signs can be and who can put signs up and all that kind of jazz. So I think we'd need to look at that and think about that as a separate issue, separate from what we're voting right. on so, tonight. So we had talked about that, that what we would need is whatever the dimensional business and all that. Sure. It would be unobtrusive, but. But the rest of it sounds great. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just really a wonderful thing. The you know what you've been doing with our town and the supports that you've that you've offered and a lot of folks that are involved with you know with the organization that you know it's really a big community builder. Um, so I'm I'm excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're very proud of um, what we've done in the community and. And we're going to be reaching out to other communities to, to do similar programs as best we can. Um, but I have to admit, I'm a little bit tilted towards North Andover. <laughs> well, just before you arrived, Mr. McDevitt was congratulating the track team mm. for all the mostly girls, but all the kids that qualified for nationals. So I think this is great that we're just, you know, our exactly from, and I think Ms. Picard actually raised the question, did any of them start out in that youth program in grade four? So. We have the whole spectrum from grade four all the way up to, you know, your peers, your contemporaries running in North Andover, and it's just, it's excellent that we have such a, a running town with such a focus on it. And it really has developed into that. Um, you know, I went to high school mm -hmm. here, and I was on the track team um, that was up the road on um, Cinder, and um, if you're on the track team, it was like, oh, you're on the track team? Mm. And um, uh, it's really, it's, 
it's now a, a, a star sport, which is yeah. really exciting. Absolutely. Especially for women, I, I'm most delighted about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, so thank, thank you very much. This is obviously um, you know, amazing and, and very generous of, of the Striders. Um, one just quick question that I have. Um, it, it's $10,000 um, and it's cost associated with the maintenance and improvement of the track. Um, any restrictions in terms of improvements that might need to be made to equipment such as, you know, if they needed to buy hurdles or, um, you know, pits for high jumps or, you know, things of that nature? Or is this really kind of like maintenance and things that the program needs in order to continue to excel? I, I, our perspective is that anything that has to do with the track program, the facility, um, including repair of pits or whatever, Great. It's, it, it's a great facility, but it's also very expensive yeah. to operate. Yep. So I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, yeah. this year it could be, you know, that they need to do some work on the track, but, you know, in two years it could be, I don't know, a couple of hurdles that are broken or, you know, my sons are running, you know, a lot broken. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, they might need to do some repairs there. So. No, I think that's okay. Fits in with that. No, that's great. This is fantastic. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Shall we? Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I will move that uh, we approve the memorandum of agreement between the North Andover School Committee and the Merrimack Valley Striders to be in effect annually as long as mutually agreed to by both parties. Second. second. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Mabley. Any discussion? Mr. McDevitt? Yes. 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 And yes. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. It's terrific. Thank you very much. We Exciting. are delighted and uh, we look forward to maintaining this partnership for definitely for five years and hopefully for 10 and beyond that too. And I was one of those fools who, those 3,000 fools who ran <laughs> along, with my, along with my two kids who cried. Well, one of them cried the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> the whole way home and it was not the girl. <laughs> well, as the announcer, I did a fair amount of crying as well. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Awesome. Um, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I had been warned about giving Tom the mic, and I think it was Tom that warned me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Second reading of the proposed foundation budget resolution. Uh, so I will move that the committee approve as presented in the Package a resolution in support of full funding for our public schools. Well, before we oh, actually, sorry. sorry, before you move, we do have an update. Oh, okay. Oh, so just a quick update. I was gonna um, that. that um, I wanted to read something into the record tonight from the oh. uh, teachers okay. union, um, oh, okay. and I also wanted you to know that um, James, if you can um, go down to the fifth whereas. It didn't, the change did not make this packet in time for distribution today. I thought uh, it did. Is the change there? What oh, no, maybe not the packet. I saw it online. Sorry. Okay. okay. So whereas. if you can go to the whereas uh, legislature has yet to pass. Yep. So if you could highlight that, James. So <coughs> in <coughs> connecting with the union, it says it here. Um, they're really thrilled that uh, you would consider it along with all the other towns listed in the packet. But they did recognize that um, someone had uh, just a few questions about the language in this one, and they asked if we could eliminate that one altogether. And I'll read um, uh, on behalf of Ryan Landry and Lisa Rassen, and co-presidents of the North End of a Teaching Association, the state funding resolution, and it's through the North End of a School Committee. Dear members of the school committee, would like to thank you for considering the resolution in support of the full funding of the North Andover Public Schools. We understand that this is a symbolic gesture, but we believe it's important to show a unity between the school committee, North Andover School Committee, and the North Andover Teachers Association. We are all interested in providing the best public education possible to our students, and we believe a fully funded foundation budget is an important part of achieving that goal. We know that you had brought up some concerns with the original language at the first reading. We agree it is unfair to blame the legislature for not passing this legislation in the past, given <coughs> the fact that there are some legislators who were first elected this session 
and many who worked toward this goal in the past and were just as upset as we are that it has not been enacted. To show solidarity, we have altered the language in the resolution and plan to vote um, on the revised resolution at one of our own NADA e-board meetings. Thank you for your, your time considering this matter. Best, Ryan Landry and Lisa Rassett and co-presidents. So their amendment is to take that out entirely, you said? Yes. And can we vote on it tonight with that taken out? Is that what yeah. we're doing? Do we need to wait for them? So I think we would have to, to amend it. move as yeah. what's in the packet and then amend what's in the packet and then vote on it. That's right. what I think would be. Okay. <coughs> so I think I... So you already moved it? I already moved it and then we get some clarification before mm -hmm. the second or an update before the second. So. Okay, so I'll second. Okay. okay. And I will move that we remove the <laughs> second to last paragraph. <laughs> second to the last whereas, or the last whereas, I should say, yeah. um, uh, as presented in the packet. And as requested by the NADA teachers, I guess? <laughs> no. I mean, we're just. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll second that. Okay. So now there's okay. discussion. Okay, any discussion? And Mr. Tristan said he couldn't be here. and. He, I spoke with him by him phone about, about this, amending right? it to the has yet to pass and he thought that was a great idea. And then now it's completely gone anyway. Right. So you would be right. happy. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So then do we have to vote on the amendment and then the full motion? Yes. Amendment first. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is that a yes or are you just agreeing with Mr. Neely? It's a yes. It's a yeah, okay. that's definitely yeah, a yes. Yeah, so we have to vote on whether yeah. or not we're removing it. Right, I'm asking you if you're, you're voting yes on the amendment. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're asking for clarification. <laughs> like, is Mr. Mealy correct? Yes and yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yes. Okay, four nothing. And now we vote again. Yes. So I vote yes. 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 And yes. And yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Great, thank you. I know the union uh, is thrilled to uh, work with us, work with you on this. Absolutely. Second reading of the SEAM Collaborative Agreement. So is this three motions or is this one motion altogether? For hmm. voting purposes. There's three moves, so. We do them singularly. I guess we have to do them singularly, right? Or can we take them all together? Yeah, you could do it as one. You can? You can do it as one? Yeah. Okay. So I will move that the North Andover Public Schools become a member of the SEAM Collaborative Effective July 1st, 2019. And I move that we approve and be bound by the SEAM Collaborative Articles of Agreement and authorize the chair to execute the agreement on behalf of the committee. And I move that we appoint the superintendent to serve as the district's representative to the SEAM Collaborative Board of Directors for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. Se <laughs> <laughs> Motion made by Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Mabley. Any discussion? I think this is great. I'm yeah. thankful that you've been pursued and that we were accepted. And I just want to say thank you to Donna Strait for explaining the benefits last time. And also thank you to Town Council, uh, Suzanne Egan, for so thoroughly reviewing this with Mr. Neely. Any comments or discussions? All right, Mr. McDevitt? Yes. 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 And yes. All right. We have no new business tonight. OK. Is that a first? I was just going to say, is that a first? Might be. And seeing no public comment. Uh, any final comments from the group? Uh, no, nothing. It's Pi Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, math! I, I have one that, believe it or not, um, there'll be a town election before our next school committee meeting. Oh, my. Oh, that's right. And um, while I am... Um, running unopposed for the seat of the school committee and Rosemary Connolly-Smidilli is running unopposed for 
uh, to be a selectman again, uh, we <laughs> respectfully ask, or I do on our behalf, <laughs> that you come out and vote. <laughs> because it's still important that you uh, exercise your, your right to vote for um, that. And it will be here at the high school, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, I respectfully ask that you keep me on this committee. <laughs> I would add to that that if anybody has college students home, they might want to get absentee ballots um, while they're here. Thank you. So I will uh, move that we adjourn, and uh, I think we're going to go on to the history lab in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to have that recorded and added in as uh, an appendix to the meeting. Just as a quick museum walk with Mr. Sheehy of 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Hmm? Second. All right. Motion by Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Picard. Yes. 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 And yes. We will see you on March 28th. Thank you.